Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is my second of 2019 and we're going to be having an interactive sort of video. I'm going to be doing a question and answer session. So on my YouTube community page, if you don't know where that is, go to my channel, click channel, swipe right a few times. Somewhere there, there is community. And under there so far, I've posted two pictures. And under the second picture, I asked you to ask me some questions for a Q&A session. And quite a few of you guys interacted with me on that question or rather on that picture. So I'm really excited that you guys are interacting with me on my community page. I am going to be posting a lot more on there. I also want to post some videos on there as well, like little snaps um, and more pictures on there so I can interact with you guys in between my videos. And I also asked on Instagram, the questions tab, asked you guys to give me any last minute questions for this video and we got quite a few questions on there as well. So, I haven't decided if this is going to be very long, one long video or it's going to be part one and part two. But you will see, if it says part one, it means I split it in two. If it's one long video, then get some coffee, get some water, make a smoothie. I should have done that. <laughs> and do enjoy the video. And if your questions have been answered in this video, do please comment down below. Let me know that I answered your question or if you think I answered it sufficiently. And if it hasn't and if you have anything else to ask me, then feel free to say that in the comments down below. But until the next clip, enjoy this Q&A. I got some nice questions, so I hope you guys do enjoy it. I'm going to enjoy making this. I know that for sure. So until the next clip, I love you all and God ever stay blessing you. So we're going to start with the questions on the YouTube community page. And Mukhao Gekana asked me, do you have favorite books that you would recommend in these categories? Self-help, spiritual and autobiography. So, unfortunately, I think I've mentioned this in my taking stock video, I genuinely don't read very much. Like, outside of my school books and stuff like that, I know this may be disappointing to a lot of you guys, but I genuinely, genuinely don't like read. I'm not like a person who's going to go buy novels and stuff like that. However, in terms of spiritual books, um, I mentioned this in my Get to Know Me tag, one of the first videos that I made on my channel ever, ever. I have a favorite Christian book writer and her name is Francine Rivers and Francine Rivers makes really really amazing amazing Christian books so if you are looking for a good book to read do go to Kum Books because you can find them there and I'm pretty sure you can find these online as well in this day like in this new age of downloading books and stuff I'm sure you can download them onto your phone as well do check out Francine Rivers I'll leave her name on the screen and my favorite book by Francine Rivers that a lot of you I'm sure are familiar with is Redeeming Love. That book is absolutely amazing, turned my life around in terms of in terms of my Christian walk and it's pretty much a I don't know an analogy for how God chases after us and goes and fetches us and pretty much finds us even though we are always um, lost in sin or if we do tend to turn back to sin so it's a really really good book to read if you've never read it Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers I would definitely recommend and just any Francine Rivers book because her books are amazing in terms of self-help and autobiographies I'm not a big self-help book fan I don't know I just feel like for me my self-help book is the bible and religious content that pretty much is what i turn to for self-help content and then autobiographies i really genuine have not even read one in my life so i can't suggest any of those mohao kekana again asked what's your devotion routine and what resources would you recommend so my devotion routine is that i make sure that when i wake up in the morning before i get out of bed or before i touch my phone and do other things i pray because as soon as i get started on with my day um, I wouldn't say it gets very difficult, but it gets very easy to forget to pray and to pray properly, you know, to actually devote a specific set time to praying and pretty much setting your life in order for the day and putting yourself towards God or in front of God for the day. It's really important to start with that before you do anything else. Because as soon as you pick up your phone, your phone is associated with your social media, this, that and the other. So it may be very difficult to get back into the swing of praying properly if you pick up your phone first so i make sure that i pray first and then after that if i do have something that i want to read on my phone because i do have um some devotionals on my phone it's not necessarily like a specific um 
rides out or anything like that but i literally just looked up devotions or rather i look up devotions on the internet and if i've started or like on a specific day of um the devotion then i just continue with it with it until i finish and if i don't feel like i really like that devotion or if it's not working for me then i just google and start a new devotional so if you are a person because i remember when i was in um pretoria or i was still in varsity in pretoria i used to have like an actual devotional book that you could read and write in and all of that so again i'd recommend that you go to come books which is again that christian um, bookstore and go buy yourself an actual devotional book i think i should actually probably go like check out some of those and see what's available and if i do find any that i think are really good to buy i'll link them down below so do get yourself a devotional because that will also if you're starting with your christian journey or starting with your christian walk or if you're just getting into being more consistent with god then it'll be very easy for you to follow a devotional because then you know every single day of the week or every single day of the month and the year you need to read that devotional and if you get behind then you've missed a day you know so that will help you get into the swing of it so my devotion routine is i pray first before i do anything else and then i wake up and i also have this thing where i honestly pray anywhere and everywhere that i want to so in terms of my worship session because i wake up wake up really early and i have to get things done really quickly i genuine genuine have my worship session for the day in my car so when i'm driving i nine times out of ten i'm listening to gospel music so if i'm driving to work then i'll have my devotional session i'll sing i'll do whatever it is that i need to do and again i'll pray by the time i get back to work or rather by the time i get to work so i also think it's really important to realize that you don't need to pray only when you're kneeling in the morning and then pray when you're kneeling in the evening you can honestly pray anytime and everywhere to god and god will always hear always hear you and even if it's not you praying out loud you can definitely say a silent prayer or pray out loud if you want to so i think also just get into the habit of talking to god like he's a friend and if you get used to talking to god like your friend then it gets a lot easier to um again connect with god and stay consistent as opposed to chastising yourself maybe if you don't stick to I pray at 8 o'clock and I pray at 5 o'clock, you know, and make it fit in with your routine. Like I'm saying, I don't have the time necessarily in the morning to wake up and then sing for an hour, but I drive to work for an hour. So that whole hour for me is a prayer session and that works with my um, daily schedule and my daily routine. And it's not very difficult for me to stick to because I always have to drive to work and I always have to drive back. So then I incorporate my worship into that. The next question is by Ayanda Makanya and she says, how has your life changed after winning the Pons competition? Any great campaigns in the pipeline and you're a fave in general. Thank you so much, Aya. So um, in terms of my life after winning the Face of Pons competition, so the Face of Pons necessarily doesn't ne take away from my life in terms of it's not a busy I wouldn't say job what is it yeah it is it's not a busy like role you know because i don't have to physically go do things the only thing that i need to do for pawns is if i need to make appearances then i have to be at the appearance if i need to i did my key visual shoots already so all the content in terms of the pictures and this that and the other that pawns is going to use for the duration of my tenure as the face of pawns then i've already shot that so i don't need to do that again however this year we may be having some seasonal shoots but that's like something else um but it's not like a very strenuous thing so it doesn't take away from my life or make me even busier unless if i have to attend an event so that's the only thing that's a bit different that i need to attend some pawns events and i need to do some appearances and if they need me to speak somewhere or attend an engagement as the face of pawns then i do that but i think maybe the biggest thing that I can say has changed in my life is I gained a new family because the Pons group is a really amazing group of people and they really are a pleasure to work with. And I'm so happy that the first big campaign or the first big partnership or ambassadorship that I got is something that um, is run by a group of people that are genuinely just amazing people. So for me, that's just been a beautiful experience. So I think I've learned a lot about the industry and being an ambassador and pretty much how you should carry yourself as an ambassador but my life itself hasn't necessarily changed um and in terms of my reach i think my platforms just in general my instagram my youtube my pages grew a lot after i became the face of pawns and my twitter account as well that i really ever use i got a lot of followers on twitter um after the com the competition so i think those are the main main things that i can say changed but other than that still the same old me
The next question is from Radiant Ndala. And Radiant says, I heard you singing on your Instagram stories. You sounded really good. Do you have any other hidden talents? Um, thank you so much, firstly, for thinking or saying that um, you think I sing very well. I really appreciate that. I'm very shy though, which is why I've never done a cover on here or anything like that. And I feel like those 30 second videos or 10 second videos are easy to get by and it's not like in your face I'm singing or I know people are watching me sing. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I'm really shy about singing and all of that, which is why I don't do it outright. Maybe one day I will. We'll see. Maybe at the end of the video I will. Who knows? <laughs> but um, I don't think I have any other hidden talents. No. I don't know. I think singing is pretty much the only other thing that I do. Um, I can dance as well. A little bit. Not like I should be a dancer. Amazing. But I feel like I dance okay enough. So yeah. Maybe that's the only other hidden talent that I have. But yeah. I don't think there's anything else. The next question is from Kanyan Sikili. And she says, any advice on finding yourself? I feel aloof and like everything is happening around me and I'm just going with the flow and I really want to find my niche. Any advice? By the way, it looks great on you. Keep it up. I'm not too sure what she means about like it looks great on you. I don't know. Or maybe my niche. I don't know. <laughs> but um, advice about finding yourself. I think pretty much when you go through life right you do know when something fits and you know when something doesn't fit it's just that a lot of us are very prone or tend to hold on to things that we know don't fit and we want to force them to fit but even when you know that like this isn't for me this isn't working for me this doesn't make me happy i don't enjoy this you still force yourself to do that thing even though you don't enjoy it so i think finding yourself pretty much just is encompassed by self introspection so if you always spend time or rather if you take time at some point in your life or at some point in your journey or if you're saying finding your niche in terms of I don't know maybe you mean um, as a social media creator or whatever the case may be you need to stop at some point and reevaluate the things that you're doing do you still enjoy it does it still work for you is this actually what you want to be doing are you doing it because other people should say or rather are saying you should do it or are you doing it because you genuinely actually love it so it's just important to reevaluate where you are what you're feeling what you're thinking and how you feel about the things that you're doing and the easiest way for you to eventually find where you're comfortable and where you're happy and where you fit is reevaluating your situation and i think Finding your niche starts with you discovering what you enjoy and what you love because in terms of social media content creation as much as it's about beauty is booming at the moment or fashion is booming at the moment it's also really important to consider what do I actually like because if you're going to be a fashion influencer for instance I could never do that because I'm a student I don't have money I'm too broke to be buying clothes all the time already in my wardrobe I don't think I have a great wardrobe of clothes so I could never keep up with posting pictures every day or creating a lookbook every week or whatever it just doesn't make sense for me at this point in time I may like fashion in general I like clothes but it doesn't mean that fashion influencing is for me so also choose what fits with your life at the moment and what can actually work and then take it from there don't jump on things that you think are popular and things that you think are good because you'll also get burnt out eventually you won't enjoy doing it as much and you'll get tired of it so start with what you have build on that and I think the more and the more you make little changes here and there especially if you're starting from a premise of th something that you enjoy then you'll end up exactly where you want to be and you'll see growth in those spaces and those things will do well as opposed to starting with something you don't like that doesn't fit in your life that you can't sustain that you can't afford and then you're forcing yourself to do it and it comes across especially on camera for instance if you don't like something or if you're not enjoying something or if you feel uncomfortable about it it comes across and your viewers and the people that see you and the people that interact with whatever content you're creating or whatever she wants to do in this case um people will always see that you're not happy and it doesn't fit so find something that makes you happy and find something that fits next question or comment is from olirato mualafi and she says anything to do with your spiritual journey plus how you deal with rejection and disappointment when things go south in your life so um i think i've mentioned like a little bit about my spiritual journey and like the past few questions but 
how I deal with rejection and disappointment is I cry. I feel like pretty much just like everybody else. But I think for me, it's more of a faith thing. If I get rejected for something or if I'm looking forward to something or if I want to do something and it doesn't come through, I think a good example would be like, let's say a campaign. So let's say um, I get asked to pitch for a campaign or something like that. And I'm really excited about the campaign and it doesn't pan out. Obviously, I feel really dejected and I do feel rejected and disappointed disappointed but at the same time time i think that's why i say i approach my life and things in general from a faith perspective because my entire life is like a faith story or pretty much like a i was rejected and disappointed story but i'm eventually where i was always meant to be you know so like i mentioned in my past videos if you've ever watched my med school videos or videos about my journey where i didn't make it into medical school initially and i pretty much spent four years doing something that i didn't want to be doing to eventually get into medical school and now i'm in final year and i'm finishing in a few months so i was really disappointed and i did feel rejected at the time but i guess god just felt that it wasn't my time you know and it wasn't time for me to claim the blessing that he always had for me i just needed to wait have faith and trust that it would come to me eventually and that's exactly what's happened with my life and if anything i do think that the journey that my life followed or the journey that i followed in my life was really important to build the character that i have today and to build me into the possible doctor that i'm going to be in the future right now i think i'm really equipped to be an amazing doctor and i know i'm going to be one but maybe when i was 18 i wasn't ready for it and i would have flunked out of the situation or maybe things just wouldn't have worked out the way that they should have and God knew that I wasn't ready and God knew that it wasn't gonna work for me so I needed to take the time to detour and go the other way take the road less traveled and eventually come out of the other side of this whole situation much stronger and where God wants me to be and ready to face the things that I need to face so I think because one of the biggest things in my life like I mentioned is a faith story I approach disappointment and rejection like a human being by crying and being upset about it and complaining about it as everybody does but after that i realized that maybe it just isn't the time for me or maybe the thing isn't for me it's meant for someone else and i also always remind myself and teach myself that let's say for instance if it's a campaign that i know i was supposed to be pitching for or that i pitched for and i see now somebody else doing it i also teach myself to not be envious or jealous of other people because that breeds hatred in your heart and that breeds negativity in your life so even if whatever you think was supposed to come to you goes to someone else learn to genuinely be happy for other people because at the same time as much as god has given you um god or rather as much as god has decided not to give to you at the time he's decided to give to them and when your time comes it will be beautiful then the next question is by Palisa M and she says, can Accutane cause infertility or is that a myth? So Accutane, this is now from my How I Cleared My Skin um, video where I said I used Accutane to clear my skin. So Accutane is teratogenous. So pretty much what that means is that if you take Accutane and you get pregnant, you'll be born with a baby that has deformities. This is not even like it may be teratogenous, it definitely is, which is why when they put you on Accutane, it's really important that if you are sexually active, you go on contraceptives and if you're not sexually active you choose or you pledge to abstain or you stay abstinent um, and if you are um, going to take the pill or rather take Accutane and you are like married or whatever and you are trying to have children then they advise you against it um, until the time until such a time that you've had your child or you're not planning on having a child anymore in that space then you can take the Accutane because even after you've taken Accutane you have to wait six months to a year before you can have a child so it can cause birth defects but in terms of it causing infertility that's probably like one of the side effects that's on the list but it's happened to one person in a million so it isn't a side effect that is on the top of the list or a side effect that i have come across or a side effect that i've ever even heard of but i definitely know that it is teratogenous so if you're considering it make sure you are not gonna have sex if you are having sex that you're going to take contraceptives and if you're trying to have a baby just don't take it now and then if you have started taking it and you want to have a baby in the future wait six months to a year before you start taking Accutane. the next question is from sisanda casa and she says besides you which is really sweet who are your three favorite essay youtubers i'm saying it's really sweet because she thinks i'm my own favorite youtuber that's really really sweet i appreciate that i hope i'm your fave i hope so um but my three favorite essay youtubers 
I would say is Kateo, so JK, so just Kateo definitely on the top of my list. Not just because she's my friend, but I just really think she's a very honest YouTuber and she's true to herself and very authentic about the content that she creates. And she also is very particular about the quality of the content that she puts out. And I mean, again, she's my friend. So she's a great creator. I love her very much and I love her content very much. So definitely JK, just Kateo, Kateo Malela is on the top of that list number two would be y'alls so i love y'alls as well again she's my friend but y'alls also is content that i feel like i can relate to um and she's also a very consistent youtuber also upping the quality of her youtube content which is really really amazing now and i just really love the energy that she brings to her content and she cares about her subscribers and cares about the people that she creates content for and considers them when she creates the content that she makes so i really really appreciate that so y'all it's definitely in my top three favorite list and then the last person is jose Katai, who is actually from botswana but um jose Ho's content guys is Yo, Jose Ho's makeup is incredible. Like every time I watch a video where she's doing makeup, firstly she's insanely gorgeous, and when she does her makeup, it always looks like an absolute dream. Consistently, always flawless. Not just flawless in the picture, but flawless when you look at it. Like you can literally see no imperfections in her makeup in her video. So video and the picture looks exactly the same. So I love, love, love. I think top one for me in terms of makeup content creators is Jose Ho because her makeup skill is absolutely incredible so that would be jk kateo um y'alls and josejo who i'll all put on the screen and link below so that you guys can follow them obviously because they're my faves god's treasure says what field are you considering considering specializing in so i'm assuming this means as a doctor so my number one is trauma surgery however i am a girl as you guys can see <laughs> so it's a bit difficult to do any surgical specialty as a woman because my main main ones actually before i started medical school it was neurosurgery then i started medical school and i did trauma and then i wanted to do trauma surge and the only thing that sucks about it is that as a woman in the surgical specialty you really just like the men spend all your time in the hospital and all your time at work so it's very difficult to want to start a family or to actually start a family when you're constantly at work so the only thing that like scares me off from doing a surgical specialty is the fact that i do want to have a family i'm 27 now or i'm turning 27 this year so i need to start a family very soon <laughs> so i need to find a boyfriend and a husband first but yeah um i do want to start a family and i think I want to be a present mother as well. Don't just want to have the kid, the children. Because, I mean, obviously, you can have children as a surgeon. doesn't mean your womb is closed. But I wouldn't be able to spend as much time with my kids as I'd want to if I do a surgical specialty. So that's the only thing that scares me off of those. But my top two is neurosurge and trauma surge. And then I've also been considering anesthetics um, because I really, really enjoyed anesthetics when I did it. And it also offers a little bit more job flexibility. Um, so it would be more suitable for me as a person who wants to have a family. And then I think my last, last option that I've also come to enjoy is psychiatry. Because psychiatry offers a really great quality of life and there's no calls for psych. So I'd never have to be on call. Um, and also it's very good, it's like financially very, very rewarding. And I think my last, last option would be plastic surgery actually. Because I enjoy plastic surgery and also there's a lot of money in plastic surgery as well. Um, and then there's also like the beautiful reconstructive surgery that you can do like with people that have had burns, people that have been in accidents. So it's also very fulfilling in what you can give back. So those are my top four options at the moment. But we'll see where life takes me and what I eventually end up deciding to do. Then Sasanda Gasa again asks, do you know any ways of treating dandruff? So at the moment my hair is natural and I wash my hair twice a week. So I really ever struggle from dandruff. So I think just keeping your hair clean would probably be one of the main things um, to keep you from getting dandruff. However, dandruff is necessarily a sign of a dry scalp. So if your scalp is really dry and it's flaking a lot, then your scalp will obviously then flake and peel and then that's how you get dandruff because that's pretty much just dead skin so i think it should be washing your hair regularly to make sure that you can get the flakes and the dandruff off 
Number two would be making sure that your hair and your scalp is very moisturized all the time because your hair is basically telling you or your scalp is telling you that it's dry. And basing your scalp or putting oils on your scalp isn't something that a lot of people like to do and not everybody loves to do it and it's not everybody's favorite thing. But if your scalp is extremely dry, then you're going to have to do it as opposed to someone who never struggles from dandruff who then probably doesn't have a drier scalp. So I think those would be the top three things that I would incorporate into my routine, washing my hair more regularly making sure my hair, the shaft, is moisturized and um, always um, hydrated, and then also adding an oil or something light, like a coconut oil, for instance, which is a very light oil, not something heavy that will clog your pores, to make sure that your scalp stays moisturized. Then Puma Duma asks, where am I from? So I was born and raised in Johannesburg, so I've always lived here, and I'm from here. Next question is from Lerato Mabuso, my paramedic babe doing the things in Dubai, <laughs> she says, um, and she's obviously asking this because she is practicing in Dubai at the moment, she says, would you practice outside of South Africa? If yes, which countries interest you? If no, why not? So, uh, the chances of me leaving this country in terms of going for work is very slim because I'm a homebody, I love home, I love being around, I'm not even considering leaving Joburg for internship, but I really do love home and I also just think that like for instance for me Doctors Without Borders isn't even a thing because South African, South Africa's healthcare system is so overwhelmed guys, I feel like Barra itself in J is Doctors Without Borders Al-Gadakh, so I don't see the need to go out of the country to give back to people in another country when my country needs me more than the people outside do. So um, I think that's the main thing that would keep me here and one of the main things that would keep me in state is that I got into medicine and I did medicine and I'm doing medicine um, because I love the nature of the work. I want to help people and I feel like God put it in me to be a healer. And that's what I feel like I'm meant to do. And I think I can do the most good at home, which is another reason why trauma surgery is like top, top of my list. Because violent crime and traumatic injury is one of the biggest problems in our, or biggest burdens in our healthcare system. So I think that's the main thing that would keep me here. However, if I was like now chasing quality of life and wanted to live a better life, the countries that I would go to would be either Canada, the UK or Australia. Because South African doctors are in demand there. So if you go apply for work there, the chances of you getting a job there are very very high the quality of life there is also really high also in like scandinavia because that and the netherlands those countries have like an amazing amazing quality of life you don't have to work as much very little work that doctors have to do as compared to the work that we have to do this side in terms of the hours that's put in and the burden of um working as a doctor in healthcare so i would definitely go to those countries for quality of life for money because you live a really really good life um, and yeah, just for peace of mind because they're also very very safe countries So those are the main countries that I would consider to go live in or work in But this may probably be like much later in my life when I feel like I've given enough to my country And I've given enough to the public health care system Then maybe I'd consider going to move to another country The next question is from Dipua Mushala And she says you have an amazing body. Thank you babes. How do you maintain it? So, um, I don't know. I think I've been blessed for the greater part of my life um, in having a fast metabolism and um, my family doesn't necessarily have people that are bigger or people that gain weight very much So that's why I just in life. I guess I've never gotten overweight or obese or fat um, Even though I have treated my body very badly and my eating habits for the greater part of my life have been horrendous I used to like get into eating competitions with the boys in high school and I'd eat like loads of bread and it was bad I was a mess, but I never gained weight, but also in high school. I used to be a lot more active however since I've had my 20 greater than 24 I started getting weight and not weight like excessively I'm um, gaining weight because like I mentioned genetically my family doesn't have people that are big so um, I started gaining weight though and also gaining weight in the wrong places because where my body gains weight mainly is my abdomen and on the inside of my thighs so that made my thighs touch, which never happened for the most part of my life. Um, and they were like rubbing together, which is really, really uncomfortable for me in general in life. It still is. And my belly, that's where I gain like a lot of weight as well. And I think my belly actually gains weight first and my cheeks. So if you see me gaining weight, my face gets fat first, then my belly gets fat, then my thighs get fat. Um, so how I've been maintaining that, or rather how I've been dealing with that now, because now I've committed to um, living a healthier lifestyle and pretty much getting into exercising is on and off. I have been running and exercising. We have some gym equipment at home. 
but I never really got into it fully and properly and committedly. So now um, my sister and I, because she's back home, she doesn't go to boarding school anymore. Every day after school and work or hospital or school for me too, um, we get home and we run. We exercise for about 45 minutes. So it's cardio now for now, just to get into the routine of um, exercising. So we either run or use the elliptical or skip. And later on, we're going to start adding strength exercises. So now it's just to get into the routine of having an exercise routine. And we try and exercise at least three or four times a week. Um, so we've only been doing that for two weeks. So I guess so far, I have seen some good results and I've also started eating better and I've stopped eating late at night because I mean I study at very odd hours so I've been eating badly so if I ever feel hungry when I'm studying I make myself a smoothie um, with some meal replacement powder so it keeps me full but it doesn't make me gain weight so that's what's been working really well for me so yeah when I get into a better what's this into a better exercise routine or health or healthy lifestyle routine then i'll definitely share that with you um and i want to share it with something that i can say has given me results and not just airy fairy do this and it will be great when it i haven't experienced the results from it but so far that's what we're doing then snay name Zalose says what keeps you going and why so i am a very driven person by nature and failure is never an option for me for many things everything so i think my passion for things and just my nature keeps me going and i think also my family i mean i don't come from a very wealthy family um we don't have everything and um my parents have looked after me for so long i mean i've done two degrees this is my third they've spent a lot of money on me this that and the other and i have a sibling that also needs to go to university that also needs to follow her dreams whatever those may be even if it includes not going to university and for me it also drives me that i need to be there for my sister and i need to look after my sister and i'm the person that needs to be there for her so i need to work so i can be there for her so i think just the passion and the love and the support that i've gotten from my family also is a big factor for me um that keeps me going and drives me and reminds me that of failing like i said is not an option for me for more reasons than just me being competitive and me always needing to win there's people around me that need me and that keeps me going mm -hmm.